our tradition in middle school, so we may do it at nine and again oh, at nine thirty. Um, if you would all take a minute to introduce yourselves, what programs you're running, and big difference. Are you in school, online, or hybrid? You get three choices. And if your school has come up with a fourth configuration, do let us know. <laughs> My name is Jeannie Malone. I'll start. Um, I chair the middle school committee, and I work with Thomas Aquinas Middle School. They are on a hybrid. The little people are there every day, and grades, let's see, five, six, seven, and eight rotate um, what they come to school or to campus for. They come for art or they'll come for gym or they'll come for science lab. So at least our, our beloved middle schoolers can have some eye contact and some chit chat time with each other. But currently that's what our little St. Thomas is doing. So who wants to jump next? Uh, I'll jump in. Uh, we are actually in school except for a few that are called Clark at Home. We're preschool through eighth grade. Um, the Clark at Home kids zoom into class as if they were there at the same time. We have a thing called an owl, which uh, shows the kids at home uh, 360 in the classroom. And then it also amplifies their voices. And um, I can put them on the TV so the other kids can see them. So they're actually in the classroom. Um, they have two weeks options, so I've got some coming back. So more the merrier are coming back into the uh, classroom. So, I, but we use tents. We're outside, like I was said before, and we uh, spread out as much as possible. Masks, sanitizer. We're doing well. Thank God. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Deborah. Who'd like to go next? Hi, uh, I'm Kevin Torwelli. Finally got my mic, my mic working. Um, I'm the speech and debate coach at Canterbury School in Fort Wayne. Uh, we are having school five days a week. Uh, we have about 12% of our kids who are um, remote right now. Uh, zooming. We, uh, zooming. Um, some of them have started calling them Zoomers. Uh, so we'll see if that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but we, we knocked down seven walls to increase the size of our classroom. We put up tents outside, um, and we're we're making it happen. It's it's a little bit messy and sloppy, but uh, it's been good yep. so far. Good, good, good. <clears throat> Kevin, who'd like to go next? I will. What the heck? Uh, I'm Brent Sparrow from Perry Meridian Middle School. Um, we're doing a hybrid. Students A through L come Monday and Thursday. Students M through Z go Tuesday and Friday, Wednesday, everybody's virtual. It gives the teachers a chance to catch our breath and get our things together for the week. And then we repeat, what we're using is Canvas and putting together assignments that way. And um, it's it's working pretty well. The, the thing we're happy about is we get to actually see some students, which is great. And the students can opt in again if they want to go. Um, we had some parents have their kids go back to the the learning in our in school because some of the kids weren't doing the work. What a shock. But um, anyway, uh, they're back in class now. What we do is the kids stay in the rooms and we all have carts and we go to them. So there's less congestion in the hallway. So that's the kind of thing we're doing basically. So we're just glad we get to see students. Thanks, Brent. Hey, I'm Christine Schrader. I teach over at St. Jude South Bend speech uh and i feel like i have to recruit a whole new team this year <laughs> i won't be able to offer it as a class we are in person we're keeping all of our grades um, and classrooms together so there's no mixing of grades which is why my my speech class got eliminated uh and in person six feet apart with masks and the larger classes that won't fit in a classroom we've had to split so you have a teacher going back and forth between two classrooms or trying to do a live feed of themselves in one while the other class is watching them on her on TV. Mm. <laughs> I tried to do that and I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna just do something else. So I figured out my spacing. It's just figuring out space. We do have a few, maybe a handful or less in each grade who are, who are doing it from home and we're using Google Meet as our platform. 
Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. And thanks for South Bend repping today. Look at this. It's Deborah and Christine. It's me and Christine. And I know. And then Canterbury with Kevin. Boy, the north end of the state is repping today. Good for you guys. Uh, I think Candy Brown's uh, not had a chance. Sure. Yeah, so I'm Candy Brown. This is my sixth year at Jackson Creek Middle School, coaching both speech and debate. We're in Bloomington, and I work with Linda Scott, who is trying to get into this meeting no. and meeting and navigating the system. Um, but hopefully, she'll join us. Uh, the The schools are switching every couple of weeks. What we're doing in terms of all online versus some hybrid. Uh, with the option of staying online, but in terms of how this impacts us, we're 100% online for all extracurricular activities. So tournaments will only work for us if they are virtual, and that's true for our practices uh, as well. I would add a footnote. St. Thomas uh, has not determined uh, at this point, if they're going to run their speech team, because Ooh. it's an extracurricular, so that could be, and I will also, did everybody, well, and then Mary's down there. If you've never met Mary Frith, Mary's with us. Hey, Mary. She's important. You're muted, Jeannie. Mary, please tell us what you do. You're important. I don't do so much. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But I have a, I have an impressive title. I'm the yeah. chief operating officer of the IHSFA. So um, one of the things that I've been doing recently is collecting all your money yeah. and depositing it so, uh, so that we do have okay. some money to work on different aspects of the, of outreach. Um, and I think, uh, I work together with with Sarah and and Fred. Uh, I didn't have to do as much this year because uh, Sarah is the techie guru. Um, oh. She knows everything about everything. So, um, Jeannie, I wish you were a voting board member because I would recommend that we move to have her stipend increased. Uh, to say the least, Mary, to say the least, I would encourage all of you, um, if you don't have Sarah's email and you are looking at hosting a virtual tournament, uh, first of all, make sure you get to the afternoon session today. It starts, I've got to look it up. One? Uh, Was it at, one? Yeah, at one o'clock. The one o'clock session will tell you hopefully as much or more than you want to know. And if afterwards you need to decompress, just text me and we'll decompress together. Um, I, I can assure you that if you want to run a virtual tournament, we're going to do everything possible. And I know that is the big thing, um, how to do it. I know Deborah already has calendared a tournament for, ho for Halloween. Is that right? So You're our, our brave woman for Halloween. So um, it's Sarah Berghoff. Uh, you can get her at communications at IHSFA.org. You can get her at Sarah, uh, yeah, Sarah Berghoff at, and then at the Perry School address. She's pretty. Perryschools.org. Sorry, Brent. Perryschools.org. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. We need all the help we can get. We need yeah. all the help we can get. Um, but people want the virtual opportunity to happen this year. Um, and I know it's the elephant in the middle school meeting, even though we have our set agenda over there on the left. Um, and I, I hesitate to go too far into it because we are missing half the people who said they were going to come today. So if you can just hold on about virtual meeting and how to do it, when to do it, I promise you we'll get there. Is, is that ben Stewart is a Ben Stewart is another guru and he's running a workshop this afternoon. Yeah, so that's the one o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is that, the, that virtual one is the same as the speech wire, the one o'clock. That's yes. the speech wire one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, ben Stewart, sure. so tattoo his name on your arm, even if it's temporary folks, <laughs> Ben Stewart. He created speech wire. Um, I don't think he's the age of my oldest daughter. 
uh, which is, you know, that's how brilliant he is. He was a real speechy kid. I was it in Illinois, Mary. I think yep. he was the Illinois thing. And um, he actually test marketed this probably, I would say Speechwire might be six years old, maybe at the very most. And Indiana has embraced it the last four or five years to the point where the high schools almost always use Speechwire. And I'm pretty sure in the past two years of competition, middle school in Indiana has used Speechwire. Uh, ben is uh, pretty cerebral, as you can imagine, but he's a terrific speaker. He was on radio. So listen to the broadcast voice this afternoon. That's the commercial for Ben and virtual. Mm -hmm. um, and I promise when we get the rest of our crew in here, we will talk about e-ballots. Um, I've had notes from several of you like, my people have never used e-ballots. What are you talking about? Can I interrupt you? Sorry. Do you have the ability to let people into the meeting? Because I know Linda's trying to get in and there may actually be others. Did you see the pop-up box? Yep. Which pop-up? Okay. At the top? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they pop up in the middle of the screen. It just says meeting details chat. I pop, no, meeting detail. No. Add people. Yeah, I mean, oh. Sorry? Chat. Well, yes. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. One person? Yes, yeah, Sarah let me in. Okay. I, um, it says add people, and I don't see any people to add. Um, I didn't get to it. Oh, in now I have here. Now somebody wants in. Okay. It, it'll Click go admit. across the thing, but it has to, uh, Candy, it has to, yeah, I just got Kurt in. Good. Um, morning, Kurt. I have to wait for the ticket to pop up, Candy. I, has she asked to come in? Did you say? Linda did. She has. I'll, I'll ask her again. Thank you. Because she's not showing up. The chat box is people can type in if their mics aren't working or something. That's what that right, is. right. And I have that open, but I thought where it says add people, oh, I could also right. go ahead. Um, I love it on the monitor. I froze. I look so cute, frozen. <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't know if it's me that keeps going in and out or you guys. <laughs> is it me? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you because you've been fine so far. Hey, Kurt. Thanks Hi. for catching up with us. We're trying to let people in, and I don't. I don't. I don't have that function unless a box appears. Candy. Okay. Well, I'll tell you to try rejoining. Let's just keep going. Okay. Okay. We still have at least three more folks to join us, and then um, if we can get your pal in, we'll be up to snuff. So let me back up. I'll hang out with you for a while and see. Can, do you see if you have the admit, Mary? I I have to get a box that flies up and have to admit them in. I don't have a. So you do have host power. Uh, Jeannie? yeah, okay. I should. Yeah, and it doesn't. It's not. It says turn on captions. Present now. Yeah, we're doing it. Sarah was so gracious to jump on with me. Um, our preliminary start and then our printed start at 9 30. Um, I don't know, this is kind of let me look for more. Actually, yeah, no, no, that's the stop recording function. We don't want to do that. Hey, there she is. She just popped up, she should be admitted. There we go. There she is. Yep. Yay! Yay! Hi, Linda. <laughs> working hard to get you in. We are thrilled you made it. Thank you, Linda. Oh my gosh, Kurt. Sorry we didn't give you such acclamations, but <laughs> no Linda has been trying for a while. Um, little hidden fact: some schools that run on Google accounts let you join anybody's classroom. Other school systems, according to my tutor last night, Sarah, lock you out of anybody else's classroom. Right. But we didn't know that until people tried. And so we didn't run a little test case 
earlier. Does does that make sense to everybody? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Perfect. <laughs> We're still missing Dawn and I'm trying to think of the rest of the list. Well, maybe Kurt and Linda could just introduce themselves briefly. We've all just said what our school is and what the online hybrid situation is and already answered for us. Yeah, my clerk. <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> uh, you want to you hear from you, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, Kurt, you're up. Okay, uh, I'm Kurt Henderson. I am one of the head coaches at Fisher's Junior High, along with Tony Sturgeon. He couldn't be here today. And um, as far as the hybrid situation, we are we're, we're a Microsoft school, so uh, we're using Zoom. We're using Office 365 to facilitate assignments with Canvas, and uh, we're getting ready to go 50/50 next or this coming Thursday. So um, it's been interesting so far. There's been a lot of questions, more, more questions than answers, but um, everyone seems to be adapting pretty well. But then once we get to this next step, we'll see just how well everyone adjusts. So it's pretty good so far. Good. Yeah, uh, good for you. I'm gonna turn my camera off for a second and see, oh, I can almost unfreeze. I'm gonna try and unfreeze. Uh, Kevin, can you tell us at Fisher's, have they announced if they're gonna let the middle school kids do um extracurricular activities outside of course sports <laughs> um we haven't gotten a lot of information about that yet i am i think ecas pick up i want to say once the kids are back in school and um I mean, obviously they're gonna have to be virtual but i we haven't really received much word about ecas but we're just all assuming that that's going to happen so okay great 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 thanks thank mm -hmm. you Kevin, are you ready to tell us? Oh, sorry. Kevin's already gone. Linda, your turn. Hi, I'm Linda Scott from Jackson Creek, and Candy and I coach together. And I guess we're headed for a very interesting season because we don't, we're, we're back in school, but we're on a hybrid schedule. So half the kids come one day, half the kids come the next. And supposedly week after next, they're all supposed to be in the building, but I don't know. Our numbers are going up, so I don't know what will happen. But we'll just wait and see. But we'll have some virtual meetings. All club meetings have to be virtual. Of course, sports are in person. We can't of not course. have sports. <laughs> you know, so uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, the situation. Candy's not allowed in the building. <laughs> And, and oh. nobody, nobody is allowed in the parents, visitors, nobody is allowed in the building who isn't staff. And even staff members can't bring their spouses or kids into the building. So, yeah, mm. it's pretty strict. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Really. So, so you have to coach uh, uh, virtually, right? I'll have to cut virtually, but it'll be okay because um, we can, uh, we, we do have some, uh, some like uh, workshop time uh, that at the end of the day and some of the team members will be in, in my homeroom. So I could coach them from a Great. distance in the room, but otherwise it, yeah, it has to be vir virtual. But okay. It'll work. Okay. God love you. Um, and what has St. Jude's decided to do? Do you have extracurriculars? Do you have CYO? St. Jude South Bend. Christine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah St. Jude South Bend. Uh, we, we don't have any extracurriculars. We don't even have our elective classes yet. Um, we're just doing academics, art, music, PE, and that's it. So, which is uh, a good push for me to actually, hey, you're not doing anything else, join me. <laughs> but I am curious, I am curious that if, uh, if you're coaching virtually, are you coaching from the waist up or full body? Like, are you watching your student full body or what does that look like? Anyone? At the high school, we coached full body for the nationals because you took the video Full body, particularly okay. for duo, um, our extempers, 
And um, the only people who sat were our congressional folks and our world school debate people. So they look like they look at the front of a classroom, if, if that makes sense. Okay. Are there other questions? <laughs> I know. I, 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 long oh, list, long question. list. I got it. I got the list, Deborah. I will do my best to get through the list and through our meeting yes. slot as people get here. Um, I, trust me, I'm doing my best here today. And um, at, at this point, we've gotten through the introductions. We've had a quick catch up on. It's going to be virtual for middle school if and when it happens. Deborah, by golly, has got her middle school tournament on the calendar now. Mine is on the calendar for January. Um, we're going to be brave. We're going to hope that we can make it work. And we all realize that everybody is in the same boat. Very few people are going to be able to, um, you know, coach and block and whatever in person. And then guess what? It, it would look different on the video that you upload anyway. So, oh, Candy Brown just says she's hoping to do one in uh, February. So I, I would encourage you, if you have the ability to work with kids in person, that's great. But for those of you who taught all last summer and have been teaching since the start of school, it's still going to be that virtual element um, for our season. I, I truly don't see it changing. Um, I really don't. I, and, I, and I don't, you know, I live with somebody who works with the FDA and he just looks at me and says, no, no, no. And he's on the way out of rim of the FDA. And he just said, no, it's, he said, you'll be lucky to start school next fall with people on your campus. So with that little happy note in mind, um, coaching virtually is a new opportunity as I have tried to embrace it. And what I have found with coaching virtually is it's just up attitude. Um, kids love to make their own videos. They love to watch YouTube. They love, and now it's their turn to be a YouTube star. Not that we're putting it on YouTube, but it's that same idea. They have to learn lighting. They're going to have to learn background. Um, but these are great lifelong skills. So I don't think it's all lost um, going in that direction. I, I can share with you. You, we're almost to the 9.30 hour. I have heard from more schools than I can believe um, that won't have their programs this year because there are no, um, how do they say it at Fishers? ECAs, extracurricular activities. I like that. Um, and so our, our virtual tournaments might attract kids from other states. That's what I told my, my high school kids. I said, you know what? You want to go to a tournament in Pennsylvania? Let's go. Won't cost us any more than going to a tournament in Indiana. Um, so there is work. Every tournament, it's new uploads. But we're going to get to that in a minute. I would really like to get to the business at hand. And I, what time I get at n almost 930. Okay. I really do want to get through the agenda, folks. We need to get through. I'd be in kind of on Oh, thank you, Candy. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me open the chat so I can see it as it goes. Um, I would just tell you folks that this year, it's not the Wild West. It's um, the new frontier. Let's look at it that way. You know, let's just embrace the opportunities that are out there for, for us and for our students. Um, you know, we may find out that we have some great broadcast voices out there because we're actually hearing them over the internet. I, I just, I just, Candy, when we had our summer um, committee meeting, Candy Brown was, she just turned me, it flipped me from being bummed out about the season and not seeing kids in person and blah, 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 e-ballot, blah. Uh, she was, no, 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 no. 
um, we actually, I'm sure when she gets to debate, she will share her big enthusiasm. But she was the one who said, you can go anywhere you want in the country. No travel budget. Think it through. These, this is gold. Uh, and, you know, I hadn't thought that way. So she kicked me in the behind and I'm sure glad she did. Okay, folks, it's 9.30. I really like to start the agenda because at 10, we break uh, for the others. So let's. we're going to hop to just regular middle school business. Um, for those of you who weren't here when we started our gathering um, a little after 9, uh, we know there are fewer schools, but who knows with the virtual frontier, we may have more schools come to tournaments. I will hope by your commitment for coming this morning that you are going to embrace the virtual opportunity and, and um, coach on, you know, what is it? Keep calm and coach on. That, that's my new kind of little thing I have on my whiteboard behind my desk. Keep calm and coach on. So we have traditionally, uh, wait till Dawn gets here. Um, let me check my email real fast because that's how people yesterday were telling me they couldn't get in. Nope, nothing from Dawn yet. Um, we need to talk some of our just traditional pieces of business. Middle school discussion, Dawn Corbin is going to handle for us. She's a new member to our committee. She's at um, school too. She's going to present later this morning. Um, so if we could just uh, switch up the order, I would like to go ahead and ask if anyone has any concerns about our rules, our guidelines, suggestions, or questions. I know it's kind of a dull place to start, but we'll just get it out of the way. Um, just one rule that we should all get on board with is because um, Candy and Linda said that they're not going to be able to record their duos in person that we should um we should all have them recorded uh i guess on a zoom is that what you wanted candy well i was part i was actually speaking um about how it was done at nationals where the requirement was um for the sake of equity since some schools wouldn't allow uh, even social distant in person, they required everyone to record in a separate room. So it's more I'm raising it as a question. It may be the case that we'll get to the point where students are allowed to be together. I'm not, I, I wouldn't count on that though. So I think probably yeah. I'd be leaning towards the separate rooms. But then as Jeannie pointed out in meetings yesterday, that still doesn't solve the problem because some individuals and schools have a lot more resources and savvy for how to record so you can make something look a lot more professional if you've got so th that's not going to solve the problem but that is something that we're going to have to figure out before deborah's tournament go ahead the other part of that deborah what we did do for nationals with our duo they literally recorded each uh, girl it was a pair of senior girls in their own basement. So their backgrounds didn't match. I mean, they tried, they both had paneling, but you know, one had like brown carpet and one had like hardwood floors. So their, even their acoustics weren't the same. Uh, yesterday when they presented duo in, uh, the workshop, uh, Dave McKenzie, no, Dan Tyree hunted out a place where both these kids were allowed to be in a catering hall, so all their backgrounds were exactly the same. And, it, and I was like, oh. And granted, this is high school. They'd won districts. They were sending it to nationals. Um, I just highly recommend that students, like they recommended for national this past summer, find a blank wall in your house or, or take the picture off the wall that's behind you. Uh, and, and kids have to practice with lighting. But, but again, I, I kind of like to get to rules um, before we go off the deep end into how to do those recordings. And I have no problem saying, let's have a Saturday afternoon and get a techie person like a Sarah Berghoff to join us with, oh, oh, let me show you what you can do with a flashlight, or let me show you what you can do with 
Um, I have no problems asking Sarah if she would run because I know the high school people are asking the same questions. How do you light these things and how do you make sure the sound uh, it, it does justice to the script, if you will? So other rule thoughts. Thank you, Deborah. Going once. Well, it seems to me that some of these rules, uh, if we're, we're revisiting rules and talking about any changes of what is currently posted 2019, 2020, that it really is dependent on how it's going to work virtual. Like in my mind, I don't see how we can set aside the virtual discussion and just talk okay. about the rules as it is. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, I, there's just so many questions about what does this look like? I don't know what radio looks like. I don't know what duo is going to look like. Therefore, I don't even know how to coach it. Like, I, I also need to know how to recruit my, you know, I need to be able to tell my students, you got to join my speech team because this is what's going to look like. So, yeah, if we want to knock it down by event, you know, say this is what all the interps can look like, and maybe we can do, run it that way. Okay, I can, um, and again, I'm going to reference how we did it at nationals. Candy had uh, kiddos in nationals. Did anybody else do the national online tournament this year? No. Okay. No, but that would be a really interesting link to provide. If we, I've never seen what it, I don't know what it looked like on a virtual level. And if there's videos or some samples that yep, you could send lots out. of them, lots of them. Um, I, I don't do two things at once well. I know that my sex tells me I'm supposed to, but I don't. So could someone in the chat right now put in nsda.org and then you want to hit the resource tab once you get in. Now, if you're a member of NSDA, you'll get to see as a part of your resource package uh, this year's clips. But there are, oh, those are the only clips that are recorded. Shoot, how can we do that? Mm. Oh, I know. Um, yesterday was recorded and yesterday's presentation, where was it? It was on the duo. Shoot, where'd they go? Oh, I'm looking at day two. That would be nice. Uh, okay. At 10 o'clock yesterday, so day one of our conference, is Duo Easy to Coach and Dan Tyree um, actually embedded in his presentation that was recorded his uh, duo video. So if you just, uh, let's see, we figure out how to link that up. Hmm. Let me ask Sarah, because I have the video left from the, my kids made that went, and, you, and you'll talk about a night and day difference. You watch Plymouth's video that's in this catering hall with the matching backgrounds and, da -da -da. and then you watch the cathedral video <laughs> these two girls in their basements that you know it would be um top and candy brown is offering um to send hers along as well you know what we should do is put those under resources on our state page let's do that so start sending that stuff to sarah um, and ask her to tab it under um, middle school resources. That's the way to do it. Thanks, Candy. Mm -hmm. um, Other ideas on the duo in terms of help? Oh, Kevin, thanks. Kevin uh, just retrieved yesterday's duo. It's in the chat. If you can see that over to the side. And uh, that right away will show you. I mean, I was impressed. Well, for those of us who haven't seen what it looks like, maybe those who have seen what it looks like can tell us what the challenges were, and maybe we can tackle those challenges with our meeting. Okay. And, and you would like to do that now? Is that what you want? Uh, if everybody else is game, I'm game for that. Uh, Candy, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, I think we've already talked about some of the issues. Um, it's coordination, right? Because so much of normally coaching duo is like figuring out how they're positioned, how they interact with each other in terms of the performance without kind of breaking rules. And so you, it, it takes just a lot more practice, 
I think, than when you're normally coaching duo. Like they just have to each really know their part and they have to practice it online in two separate locations over and over to see what works. And one of the big problems for ours was just kind of how to hear each other so there wasn't a delay uh, between when one stops and the other starts. And that's where they did the earbuds. And they actually, they asked the people at Nationals if that was okay with the rules and they said that it was. Uh, so, and then like figuring out how like physical gestures will look when they're, they're on the, the other screen. So I'll, I'll stop with that. What, what platform did they use on Nationals? Did everybody use the same? Was it all Google Meet? Um, I think everyone got to record what they wanted to. And as long as they uploaded it, you may be able to say more, Jeannie. Um, the National was very clear. We were on, um, uh, what, what is the one that NSDA owns, Candy? Uh, 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 Tab Tab they, Tab they own Tab Room. And then they had a video platform attached to it. And with our registration, they sent us the links for the kids to upload and the date by um, when the kids had to have it uploaded. So, so Mary's saying it was campus that was connected with it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the trick for our duo team, because they were very, we had a kid who was high risk. She was type one and her partner, no issues. So the type one kid couldn't leave her house. Um, so here we were apart and the two of them, seniors, very experienced, been to duo semifinals at state and finals at state. Uh, it was a big mountain to jump for them because they were so used to timing, hearing, uh, they compared their first few practices to doing it in slow motion because of the delay. If you watch the duo video from yesterday, the, the whole workshop that Dan Tyree did, it, it he explains that his 10 minute piece, uh, when they first ran it because of some of the audio delay was coming out past the 10 minutes. Um, and now in middle school, you know, we have a shorter thing to begin with. So I would say this year, for audio, you're going to want to make sure intros, cuts, everything is finished with your interps a, a minute under the time limit and, and not to worry about, oh, they didn't go use every little second. The technology delay could really hamper them in timing. So that might be something to add in the event rules for 2020, 2021 um, about yeah. the timing yeah. for judges. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good point. And, and we can't be hopeful that, you know, we could record these two people in the same room six feet apart. <laughs> we can't be hopeful for that. <laughs> you know, if your school would allow it, Deborah, yes. absolutely, you can do it. But then um, it's not fair, right? It's not fair. That's my yeah. concern is the equity because if some kids are recording and that's why NSDA didn't allow that. Uh, that was part of it. Um, but you still saw it if you watched. I mean, I kind of. It doesn't out. fix it. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think we could canvas coaches. Like that could be something that we have as a an email conversation That's once perfect. we find oh. out who actually is running programs and who plans to have duo kids. And so if it turns out everyone running duo kids is fine with Deborah's solution, then I'm fine with it. Okay. Do you want to just maybe? Sorry? Google survey of middle right. school that's, coaches. Yep, that's what I was writing. In fact, it just dawned on me, we don't have anybody taking minutes. I know we're recording, but usually we take at least some minutes that we can throw up on the website. Uh, can I have anybody just start putting bullet points together for us, please? Someone? I, I've started notes. I don't know if Thanks, I want Kevin. Good minutes, enough. but I'll, I'll do my best. Kevin, it, you know, just in case students read it, try and make the structure of the sentence, you know, legit, since most people here teach composition too. Um, with that survey, if we get it out in the next week or two, um, the suggestion is one, to find out who is allowed to run a program at this time. 
So that'll give Deborah some ideas since she's going to sponsor the first tournament, how many chickens to count, and then how or do you want the question, uh, Christine, to say how would you prefer to do duo or are you doing duo? What, what information would be most helpful for the group here? I'm at a loss, just like everybody else, um, about how to word that. I, preference, maybe. Okay. Would be the best way. How do you prefer to compete? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, in, well, we kind of know everybody's real preferences in person, but um, right. will we allow duos to be recorded in the same room? Is that what you're asking? Pretty much, yes, yes, okay. I have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be at a distance, you know, but um, it, um, you, it, get, you can get full body at you'll a distance. Get, you get full body, Deborah. When you watch the one from yesterday, they're still probably 10 feet apart. It's just they did it, um, I think, so they could hear each other which is what Candy was talking about with her duo. Those kids did it with earbuds so they could hear. Um, it, it, it's tough. Um, I will tell you, duo is tough because uh, we're not doing it live. Um, would Candy, it be too complicated to ask, you know, do you find it, would, do you find it would be equi equitable to offer the option of duo being in person in competition? Well, I mean, so kind of a modification on that, like this is a chat that Brent and I are doing over on the side here. For certain events, um, both speech and like debate, it has to be synchronous, like live at the same time in order for the event to work in the way that we're accustomed to working it. And this is where we're kind of jumping the gun, but there's reasons why we're jumping the gun. Uh, it may be that for certain events, so maybe bracket duo out of that set of events, we do asynchronous tournaments where students just upload a recording of themselves, so oratory, prose, et cetera. And so much of the tournament runs in that manner. But then what we could do, which is different from what nationals did, would be to put duo into that same category as extemp. Uh, radio, well, that's not nationals, but extemp radio impromptu debate and duo would all be synchronous events. And for those who are hosting tournaments, the short version of this is it's cheaper if most of your tournament is asynchronous um, and it's also easier to run, less chaotic. But then you could manage a small part of your tournament in this synchronous way. Uh, you're not paying as much for the rooms. Uh, it's not as chaotic to get everyone in the same place at the same time. Maybe that's the best way. Um, and for debate, when there are partners in it, they have the partners in separate locations. So it may actually work. Um, and I, I, I haven't tried this with Zoom. It may work for duo partners to do it in different locations, but synchronously. Um, I'm not sure if the delays in sound are going to be as bad that way as when they're trying to record. Maybe that doesn't solve anything, or maybe that's where we could do the Deborah solution of have them six feet apart um, in a big room synchronously performing. You mean like in the same effect as having memorized duo and unmemorized duo, having them offered as separate events. I like that idea, actually. Um, well, I wasn't thinking of it as being, um, that's not what I was thinking. Um, so, like, I was thinking it would just be one, like, I mean, it could still be two events, but I was thinking it would just be handled differently from prose and poetry. So I'm not saying let's have, like, a, a synchronous duo and an asynchronous duo. I think that's probably getting way, way too crazy. Um, Is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> no offense, that's crazy. And I would like to welcome Don. Good morning, Don Corbin. And Don, um, as is our middle school tradition, we let everybody say hi. What school they're affiliated with? Are the and this year we're uh, and 
adding the, the little caveat. How is your school functioning? Are you, you know, online, in person, hybrid, or do you have door number four going on at your school? Well, good morning, everyone, and I apologize. I, I was riddled with technical issues this morning, um, and I think I have them resolved just in time. But um, yeah, I, I'm Dawn Corbin. I uh, teach and coach at the Center for Inquiry in Indianapolis. We are um, fully virtual in my school district. The entire district is virtual, and we will be through the remainder of the grading period. Um, it's going about as well as you can expect. <laughs> we have... Um, I'm actually using my my work computer, and that's you know there were some some issues with rights because you know we have certain things kind of locked down. So that was a goof on my part this morning. But um, anyway, yeah, it's it's okay. The, it's it's coming along, but it has there has been a rather steep learning curve. Thanks, Don. Uh, Don, we started um, after introductions. Of course, people were like. Are you even competing? And I guess that's the, the next question for Center for Inquiry 2. Will they be allowed to have extracurricular activities? Can you even have a team? Yeah, well, it won't be much of a team. I, right now, we just don't have um, students choosing to engage in extracurriculars. Um, so as of now, I think I know of one student returning. I had four uh, students that I lost to high school. but. Um, also, you know, I, they may, as they get a little more settled in, we'll see what happens in the next quarter. We may pick up a few along the way, but um, I don't normally do that, but the circumstances are pretty unusual. Thanks, John. We were in the middle of discussing, we were doing our favorite household chore of the rules, and um, as Christine at the top from St. Jude South Bend said, uh, how can we not do rules and the virtual business together? So we were having a kind of a dis big discussion on what do you do with Duo and which events um, can you upload and which events can you do live? And Candy was in the middle of explaining, well, <laughs> there was this idea <laughs> some events would go one way and some would go way out of the box. But Candy, can you pick up that thread at this point for Don and for the rest? The, the short version of it is that we might run tournaments so that some events would be asynchronous, meaning they would record it, upload it, judge it either on the spot or whenever. But then other events would be run synchronously um, so things like radio, discussion, extemp, impromptu, possibly also duo uh, because of all these issues of how do you kind of record separately otherwise and upload it. So that's, that was the summary discussion for those hosting. Thanks, Candy. Um, the other suggestion that um, is running in the chat on the side, Dawn, our uh, resources and how we're going to need to put more resources on our middle school page. And again, so worth joining the IHSFA this year, folks. Please tell your friends who are coaching because these recorded pieces, uh, there's a discussion about you'll have to be a member to get to the um, to this uh, recorded conference that has so many good links in it. Um, and you all are paid members because you are here at the top of the chat. If you scroll up, um, do, 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 Sarah put, um, the form that you, you needed to do two forms. You registered for the conference, but you need to register with IHSFA. It will not cost you anything at the bottom of the IHSFA. A, because you paid $50 for the conference, that's also your IHSA fee. I sent an email out a couple weeks ago about that. It's combined. Um, so make sure you fill in that form that's at the top of the chat. It's also posted um, where our survey is when we go out of this and we go, you know, you close out of this, you go back, you'll see classroom meets, 
And oh, good morning, Fred's here. Oh my gosh, I feel honored. Um, anyway, hi, Fred. So it is, it's critical to get that form in, folks, if you did not fill it in before. And Mary sent me a list, and it looks, I mean, I had to fill one in for the high school, but you guys need to fill them in for the middle schools as well. If you'll do that, please. Thanks. Morning, Fred. Fred? Okay. Those of you who don't know Fred Drouse, he is from Ben Davis, and he and Sarah have pretty much put this virtual show together for us. So many thanks, Fred. Many thanks. We're all clapping for you. We'll send you new Tylenol because we're sure you're out of what you want. <laughs> okay. No problem. Well, thank you, pal. Thank you. Um, so at this point in the game, since we know we're going to have to send a survey out next week about um, the preferences people have for recording duo, asynchronous events, synchronous events, and the cost differential. And you'll hear that this afternoon again and again, that um, if, you, if we record the whole meet, if, well, you couldn't for some of the live events, but for our interpreting events, if you record the whole thing, every school, every event, the host school has many, many uh, rooms to sponsor, and that gets very expensive. Um, and again, I don't know all the ins and outs because I haven't looked at it yet. I was kind of hoping some little fairy dust would fall down, and I could just read and go to an education thing, and I'd know. I've been to two of Ben Stewart's things, and I know the vocabulary now, but um, I am your, my kids call me a techno-peasant, technology peasant. I never learn fast enough for them. So that said, are there other um, opportunities that we need to look at in our guidelines outside of how the heck are we going to balance the virtual pieces? We actually have three minutes left to this session. Makes me nervous. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, Deborah. There is a there is a place that um, maybe Candy can help. How I, I discussion I can understand how that would run virtually. Radio extemp impromptu because of the the choosing and the writing and the giving of information. Um, that's the one I'm going to need help with, uh, those rather radio extemp impromptu, because I want to do a hybrid meet, you know, have all the interps recorded, but try to do radio discussion extemp impromptu that day. I would suggest that anyone who is either hosting or wanting to host that we have a separate meeting. <clears throat> where we actually plan that in some detail and help each other out in, in figuring this out. So we just have another Zoom call. Yeah, another piece of this is um, for the asynchronous pieces, how are we going to get the videos there? Are we going to have everybody upload to the same place or just link to it? I'm, I'm thinking about schools that might have space issues if everybody's taking advice of video files and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so Ben Stewart's advice was that Speechwire has the ability that you, that you can do whatever you want as the kids. So they can use a YouTube video. They can do some sort of a, like, Google Drive. Like, Speechwire has the capability to take multiple upload formats. Yeah. The, the piece with Speechwire, folks, just like the NSDA platform, they have a cost. And um, I'm sure you're all bright enough to have figured that out before you even clicked on this uh, meeting this morning. And um, so then that means, do you have someone underwriting your tournament for you or will you charge a fee to come? Um, and I just ask you at this point, because we are, are broken on having to break out into our other sessions, um, and I, I feel like we haven't finished, we haven't even started disco with Dawn, and nor have we done debate with Candy in terms of topics. 
uh, ideas, how you want to finish, extend this meeting. We all start the other ones later. I, I, I don't know what to do here. Hey, Jeannie, you have till 1030. Jeannie, unmute yourself. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. No, I turned it off just because I, you know, never mind. Um, thanks, Fred. Thank you so for saving me from, you know, myself. So, so the event rules, will the event rules packet that we hand out, will, will that um, divide the synchronous and asynchronous events for coaches and judges? Like, can the packet reflect that? When we do online meets, it's an e-ballot. So are you talking about a packet that you use to download from the internet resource? Oh, okay. Yeah. I use that for my assistant coaches so that I just hand it to them. But I mean, I can also show them the link. Very right. People who might after, we, after we have our super next meeting, the people who are sponsoring tournaments, We'll get back to everybody who wants to come to those tournaments and we will post online. My guess is you're going to see the 2021 uh, guidelines for Indiana middle school speech and debate look like here are the rules. Here's the addendum because we're going virtual. Okay. I, I don't want to rebuild the wheel or the arc here. I just think we need an addendum. Um, and obviously we change our debate topics, we change our disco topics, but it's the addendum on expectations for participating in the virtual season. Is, would that be fair? Yes. And if I could just kind of interject briefly here to say, I really encourage every one of you and people who aren't here to, to come to that meeting talking about tournaments both because you'll be you'll have a stake in how the tournaments are run but also because my optimism about this season that Jeannie's mentioned is that people who have never hosted a tournament before can host a tournament this year Brent I'm looking directly at you um, because we don't have to have buildings right and so please everyone consider hosting like we could have like just a really great season so that I'll, I'll stop with that and, and I have to tell you, at the high school level yesterday, when I was in my sectional meeting, um, Burbuff has not hosted at the high school level for 10 years, maybe. They've done maybe a little district meet, but nothing like big for a speech debate. And God love JD, Mr. Teco. He just said, you know, let's do a sectional 6-7 on Halloween, which, sorry, Deborah, I can't join you. I give me a break. I live this divided life. Um, but and it's just for our little sectional. We're gonna go get our feet wet. A bunch of the sectional people are gonna meet at Burbuff and we're gonna be in a combined virtual, socially distant tab room, was what our section meeting was talking about. So I would be willing, Brent, to come down to you. I am sure we can get candy to come from Bloomington and we could run the virtual tournament. If we're allowed in your building or sit at a public library, well, the, we have libraries are open now here. We could get that done. Um, and I, I just, I really would encourage you, this is not the tamped down season. This is the season of the new frontier. It really, really, um, I keep thinking in my, my rusted brain, I even have space for new knowledge. So if I can do it, guys, and you're all youngsters, let's go. Um, and, and I would say, like, I think we can, and I'm certainly happy to kind of work with others to, like, run, like, Brian, I would totally run a tournament with you. Uh, we can run two, sort of thing. But if the thought of doing any part of the tournament synchronously makes it feel like, ah, now we're in the realm of the overwhelming, my personal thought on this is that it'd be better to have everything asynchronously and only run half the events if that means we can have a tournament. So don't let the synchronous part scare you from doing this. I'd say better something than nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that I, I agree with you, Candy, because I, I think when this all uh, was coming down, we were talking about just not having a season, right? And uh, when uh, school started virtually and kids were saying, oh, Mrs. Scott, I can't wait for speech team this year. And it's going to be so fun, even though it'll be different. I started to realize how much our kids really want and need this. They really, really need this. And so I think anything that we do, anything that we do is going to be appreciated by the parents and the kids and just everyone. And I think it's going to be really kind of awesome. I, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. You're Is she frozen for everyone? Yeah, Jeannie, you are frozen. You may need to like re-log on, like log off and log back on. Then somebody else becomes the host. Do we want to have Dawn start with the discussion topics? Yes, let's do debate and discussion. Do we lose the connection if she logs out? Does someone need to take over the present oh, now? No, I don't think we have any other way for someone else. Well, to she's gone and we're still and we're here, so here. it's okay. Why don't you talk so, to uh, so um, I, uh, as you know, Jeannie had, had sent out an email to um, encourage people to send discussion topics my way. And I received a total of zero email messages. So we have nothing to talk about, apparently. There's nothing going on in the world right now of interest. Um, and that's really sad. You know, it's too bad we don't have something to uh, excite students right now. No, um, Jeannie and I talked a couple of days ago about um, really tapping into, uh, obviously, what the kids are seeing all the time. And, and I'll be honest, in my building, we don't get a chance to give them a voice to, to really express that with this virtual this virtual stuff. So, um, the, uh, you know, I, I don't know that we want to necessarily go toward the climate thing with the fires. I don't know. I can listen to some feedback on that, but certainly uh, looking at social justice as sort of a, an umbrella topic. And, um, we also are looking at the, um, the, the <laughs> biological, um, issues with, um, you know, biological and poli political issues with the, the COVID-19 and um, the race to a vaccine and, you know, with the, the AstraZeneca issue, um, looking at ethical matters, um, you know, how, how quickly do we want to do this? Um, so those were a couple of areas that we had kind of picked over, but, but nothing, nothing solid. Some thoughts? Obviously, the pandemic and the social justice are the big, big, big stories. It's a matter of breaking them down, I think, is what you're saying, Don. How do we right. work so we can do it? And uh, I understand that's that's the rub there. Um, yeah. We just got to figure out how to word them because they are the big, big, huge stories. Yeah, and I'm I'm happy to 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 work with those and and you know whittle them down to the the three questions. I just wanted to get some some feedback since I didn't have a chance to hear from the community sure. over the last several weeks. So can we oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was ahead. just going to say, can we attack the social justice with, um, you know, um, do it uh, historically? You know the. Um, um, have them do some research and and uh, historical uh, racism where it really began um, 
uh, maybe, and then in the middle steps to it, and then in the end, the work that needs still needs to be done, mm -hmm. something like that. Because a lot of them don't realize. Yeah, you're right. The source. They were alive, they were alive during the '60s. Yeah. No, I mean this is before the source. Oh, I know what you mean. You yeah, a lot saying? of them don't know who Emmett Till is. Yeah. Yeah. What do I you think, think about I that, think everybody. If we're going to, um, if we're going to do that, I think maybe looking at some of the institutions, because I I talk to the kids a lot about how ra racism is often a a product of an institution that is set up a certain way. So maybe we could um, focus on one or two institutions: um, our justice system, our healthcare system, our education system, those are three that come to mind. I, you know, those are very broad and, and far reaching topics, but I think they have some substance and some possibilities. Well, Linda, I think um, so the, the racism in itself is the institution. I, I think that you, you can and could look at how it how it influences or affects those three different areas. Maybe that would be those three questions. Break it into uh, how it affects just justice in the United States, or yeah, I think it would be a good idea to stick with the United States. Um, how it affects the healthcare system. Um, what was the third one? I'm sorry. Education. Oh, uh, of course, there, of course, yes, yes. There have definitely been inequities and and problems there. Um, I, you know, I never thought of it that way. I think that it's, it's kind of a two way street. One of them feeds the other, and uh, we're kind of in this loop. And uh, you know, so yeah, that's a that's a good point. I I I never thought of it like that. Any so, other uh, we, uh, so what might be the first question? <laughs> what might be the first question? Yeah. Um, I, I am open to the, uh, the, the thoughts of others and how to phrase this. I'm also open to like taking these this narrowed down focus and and doing the the questions kind of offline if we want to use the time for some um, some other things that we need to cover because there was I know Jeannie was concerned about getting to debate and getting to some other things that we hadn't talked about yet. Excellent. So we agree that we would go with social justice and racism and institutions. At least we have a general topic, right? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely. Okay. Do we need a second round? Um, are we still going to do that with this virtual season or where we we have like our, what, October, uh, November kind of questions, and then we move into our, um, our questions for the latter part of the season? I think because right now we only have two meets set up before right. January. That we stick with one until the end of December, okay? Okay, that's fine. Thank Sounds you. like a good idea. We can always add more later if it turns out we've got like 10 tournaments. So, yeah. um, so Jeannie asked me to make sure that we touched on the debate topic. I'll just say a couple of words now and then uh, Deborah and I will be fighting for your attention at 1030 when she talks about the uh, interps and I talk about debate at more length. The, the topic that I'm suggesting is to use the big questions topic for this year. Uh, and it's a better topic than it's been in the past. The, the resolution is mathematics was discovered, not invented. And there are resources uh, on the NSDA website, including sample um, affirmative and negative constructives and a judge's primer. They may come up with an evidence packet. There's another uh, website that I'm going to be promoing and explaining at, during the 1030 session, which is called debatetrade.com, uh, which is where you can trade uh, research uh, with students from all across the country or all across the world. And since, there, since this is the big questions topic, 
there should be a lot of people out there besides just our locality. So I'd really encourage your students to use that debate trade website so they can do a little bit of research. And I'd even encourage you to share your research with other schools in Indiana, even though you're kind of giving away your stuff. I'd say let's be collaborative and just make it easier for kids to get as much material as possible. So Deborah had suggested some other topics. Um, that's fine if you want to run another resolution. It's whoever's hosting, you can decide on your debate topic as we've done in the past. It's just if you are hosting, um, please um, give your topic early so kids know how to research it and provide consider providing some pro-con resources to make the research part easier. So my strong suggestion would be if you really unless you really hate the mathematics topic, I think it's a pretty good resolution for middle schoolers. Uh, and I would suggest that we all use that topic all year long. And right now, can we share some of the topics? Um, my, it's actually from my students shared with yeah, you. Yeah, no, I think that's totally fine for you to share your other topics. Just also do remember they'll need to be phrased as resolutions where there can be a pretty equal case on the affirmative and the negative. So they'll have to be rewritten as resolutions as opposed to questions, but you certainly uh, can feel free to share those. And also just one more thing in case you're not, before we do that, in case you're not going to come to my uh, session at 1030, there are a number of handouts that are posted on that session invite. So if you go to the website that's running this conference, you can download handouts from the session, including things about debate trade. But uh, Deborah, if you want to talk about other topics, uh, do go ahead. Unmute yourself, though. I would have to rewrite them because I just sent you what she sent me and I thought we were going to talk about them. That's all. Yeah, I, I, have to... I, I, I looked at them and I, I honestly was having trouble coming up with evenly balanced uh, arguments on each side of the resolutions. I think in some ways they would work really well for discussion topics a little bit more than they would for, for debate. It's just my impression. But again, you're welcome to run those as resolutions and we certainly could have a longer discussion. Uh, through email on this alongside of discussion. I'm curious as to what your students propose, Deborah. Yeah, me too. I have to go back to it because I don't have it in front of me. I was just anxious to get it off to Candy. So I have to go back in my research and find them unless Candy has them there. I remember some of them, uh, so one of, and then I think I can probably find the others. One of them was MCU or DC, uh, which is better, uh, which is a bit of an opinion question. Like, it'd be hard to have evidence on the sides for that. Um, um, additionally, uh, they were, should we make the immigration process easier? Is health care a right or a privilege? Should the U.S. ban large amounts of unhealthy foods to combat obesity? And should women athletes make as much as their male counterparts? Yeah, you're right. It does sound like discussion. <laughs> I like the topics. I was just having trouble figuring out how to make them into I think the athletes one is probably the easiest one. Um, and there has been a high school topic that was a little bit related to that. So if you wanted to run with it, maybe that would be what I would say has the most potential. I don't know. You get kids talking about DC versus Marvel, it's going to get heated. I mean, I think that would be a fun topic to work for practice debates, actually. Uh, that's one I would That's one I would use, and I think I probably have used. I even teach a college course on superheroes, so I actually love the topic. Um, but I think kind of along the lines of cats are better than dogs, um, it's great for practicing sparring. I think for a tournament, we'd have a harder time if we also want to teach the use of evidence in argumentation. You got Thor. How can you argue with Thor? <laughs> Does anyone remember if there were other topics that we had on the agenda? I don't have the agenda with me. Um, I, all I got from Jeannie is what we've covered. But anything else we need to get to before 1030? 
I need to ask a question. I'm supposed to run something. I thought I was just going to stay here and just jump in. <laughs> How am I supposed to run something? So I think that we both um, log off of this meeting, and then we have to re-log on to the other meeting, and we click the, the present now button. Uh, I don't know if we actually have the ability to press record. So if, Mary, you're there listening to this, we may need some help from the people running this to get both Deborah's session and my session recorded. Um, and when, I thought I was supposed to do this at 1030. When, I thought that was yes, 1030 is when we're supposed to do it. So you I can't go to yours because I have to present. I think that they have us um, competing against each other. And that's why I'm saying if you if you go to Deborah's instead of mine, I won't be offended. Uh, you can download uh, the handouts from the session and hopefully it'll be recorded and can be made available. OK, Christine's going to take mine and I'm going to come to your session. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> I'll go to yours and Linda will take mine. <laughs> I was going to hop back and forth between the two of you guys. <laughs> and that you can do as well. Christine, you know how to warm up your kids. Don't be silly. I'm just doing acting stuff. Do you, are you serious? Do you want me to do an acting thing? No, I, no, I'm not serious. But you don't okay. need to come to mine is what I'm saying. So oh, Mary right. said in the chat that she'll be there to help both of us out, Mary, hopefully, because both Deborah and I are going to need you since we're going at the same time. And then she says that that it will be recorded and it'll be made available through Google Classrooms. So Actually, if you know, I mine's going to be very interactive as well. I think yours will be too. Um, I mostly want to like do Q and A with all of you, so it won't be the same just listening to the presentation as being there. Because uh, mostly I want to kind of field questions if you're uncertain about how to um, coach or host debate. Yeah, and if if anybody's interested, I did send Jeannie um, uh, another handout, but I think I just sent it straight to her. I didn't make it a PDF, so it's on pages. So if you need something, I'll make it a PDF, and then I'll send it to you. Okay, if you if you want to if you want my uh, little handout on warm ups and stuff. Okay. For the record, I did ask that uh, my my session run in tandem with one of yours, just because my you know not everybody needs the the kind of how to for the beginner coach. So I, I'm kind of surprised that you two were side by side. But um, but yeah, and there's no one running against mine. <laughs> this is wide open. But um, I will at eleven, I think. Yeah. So I'm I plan to bounce into to the two of yours to check those out. 11 to 11 so, to 11. So, I, I just want to say, so we've left it as we're going to send Dawn some questions about discussion and debate. I'm going to throw this out to my kids and see how they feel about the mathematics. And I'll get back to you. Yeah, what you might want to do is um, point them to the resources on the NSBA website where they have the sample constructives. The ones on there are never that great, but at least it gives you a little bit of a sense of what some of the issues are. And that one page judge primer also will give you a little bit of a sense of the issues. Um, so that'll get them. if they're still not excited, I may still try and get them excited. Um, so let's talk. I think it'd be easier if we just have to research one topic. Oh, I totally agree. And I have to use this one because I do have a big questions grant. So is there anything else that we have to talk about as a, a full group before we break? Um, the only other thing is, um, do you think Ben is going to help us on, you know, how do I run radio where, you, you know, you got to hand out the information? How do I run Extemp? No, Ben isn't going to help us with that. But this is why I'm suggesting that we have a follow-up Zoom meeting. Okay. Um, Brent, I hope you can come. Deborah, I hope you can come. But anyone who's willing to consider hosting as well, uh, and just anyone, you're very welcome. I think we're going to have to work it out by ourselves. I've got some ideas. I think we can totally do this. I've, I've listened to Ben's general speech wire. Session. Yes. We can totally do this. Okay. Okay. And we can do debate like on a Zoom too, you think? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll explain this more in like five minutes from now. We have three options for debate. 
One is the middle school debate version, like the 26 minute rounds. Uh, you can double, you can flight. Uh, second is the big questions. Both of those are the synchronous model. But then what NSDA nationals did for middle school was they did what they called a pro-con challenge where one person gives the affirmative and the negative. There are no questions, there's no opponent, but it's just run as a speech. So it's a cousin of debate. It's not as good as debate, but it's easier to run. So I'd rather see pro-con run uh, than nothing at all in the world of debate. And that could also use the mathematics topic. Cool. So are you setting up this uh, hope to uh, uh, start, uh, run a speech meet or are, is Jeannie? Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> Somewhere among us and Deborah and Don, because the four of us, uh, Jeannie didn't introduce this, but I can say it like there is a committee, if you haven't all realized it, for um, the middle school, and that would be Deborah, Don, Jeannie, and myself. Jeannie is our, our chair, and she also is a representative on the actual high school board. Uh, others are certainly like uh, none of us are kind of protective of these positions on the board or on the little committee thing. So anyone else who would want to join, do let Jeannie know about that. But we have extra meetings to talk about these things. Yeah, go ahead, Christine. In terms of, uh, so so far we only have two meets on our calendar, and that's so I know the cathedral is planning to host one. I'm not sure that's on the calendar. Okay, so it'll be on the calendar. I'm curious. It'll be if MLK weekend like usual, and ours will probably be February like usual. Okay, and those will get put on. I'm curious if I like this idea of um, opening it up on a national level. If there's a way to communicate that to all the coach, middle school coaches, like a, a link where that could be provided on our calendar of like, hey, Texas is holding a meet here or Chicago is holding a meet here. This is what Speechwire is for. Speechwire, oh, okay. you should go to that calendar and it will say when it's an invitational. Um, so that's your source. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Anything else before we break for a couple of minutes before the 1030 session? Just great seeing everybody and hope you all can have programs this year too. And let us know on the committee if we can help you if your program is in jeopardy. Uh, and for that matter, we might be able to get like either Jeannie or uh, maybe someone even in higher up leadership to talk to your principal, your superintendent, to encourage them to support you in running a program, even if it has to be done virtually. So don't just let programs disappear without letting us know uh, how we can help you as an organization. All right, well, shall we adjourn for like two minutes? And then you'll need to re-log on to either Deborah's session or mine, and you can jump back and um, forth between them. And then Don's session is for all of us collectively to jump back on at 11. It'd be great to see you uh, all as well.